the probe should be moved cephalad up along the humerus, keeping the humerus within view on the monitor. When you reach the superior aspect of the humerus, slide the probe posteriorly along the curved end of the humerus. You're looking for a nice, crisp humeral head seen here, followed by an adjacent bright white structure that represents the glenoid rim seen here. This is the bony segment that articulates with the humerus to form the shoulder joint. Keep the probe in a transverse axis at all times as this will provide the appropriate view. Obtain a nice view of the humeral head here and the glenoid here on the left. Humeral head and glenoid. The next step is to create the tangents, one from the humeral head, one from the glenoid, and then one measures the distance between these two tangents, which happens to be, in this case, 0.58 centimeters or 5.8 millimeters. This is an example of a shoulder dislocation. This is a right shoulder, but this time one can see the humeral head is actually quite anterior compared to the glenoid. So here's the glenoid and here's the humeral head in an anterior dislocation. The distance is 1.5 centimeters.